Hi there, this is Alison from Freddie Loves Crochet and today I'm going to show you a full tutorial on how to make um, one of these beautiful ripple stitch cushions. <clears throat> this um, particular one I've done here is in a DK weight, which is a light number three worsted weight yarn. I have used just a white acrylic and then I have used um, Lagoon DK in shade Balos. He has a variegated yarn, which is from Yarnsmiths at Wool Warehouse. Um, so I am going to give instructions for this weight of yarn, plus <coughs> instructions on an Aran weight of yarn, which is a worsted weight number four yarn. So this is um, one panel that I've done already, and I'm going to make the other side of it today to show you how to do that and how to put it all together so this is an aran weight and this is the double knitting weight first thing that i want to show you before we get down to the actual making is the size of the cushion pad compared to the size of the panel that's going to go in it so you'll see that it's quite there's quite a difference so your cushion pad needs to be a good couple of inches um smaller than the um the actual cover itself and um, that will help to give a really good formed puff shape because over time crochet can stretch and the pad itself can lose a bit of form so i here have got an 18 inch cushion or pillow pad so 18 inch square and um my as you can see my panel is quite a lot smaller than that so when we come to actually put it all together it does come out um you do have to sort of squeeze it in but it does give it a really nice form at the end so you're going to use um either iron weight you need a, no more than about 200 grams which is so two skeins of skeins of yarn um for either this weight or for the double knit weight either they use about the same amount in total um and for this one, you're going to use a five millimeter hook. And for the DK weight, you would use a four millimeter hook. So like I said, I'm going to be showing you this. I'm also going to show you how to, to change the size of it. If you have a different shape or different size of um, cushion pad that you want to make. Um, so I'll give you how to do the multiple so that you can still do the pattern and get it to work for you. So get everything that you need ready and tune in. Okay, so we're going to start off um, with a multiple of 14 chains plus 3. And that gives us the right amount of um, stitches to create our ripple shape. Now, as you'll see here, I have squared it off, which is something that we do afterwards at the end when we're putting a border on it. So we're going to start off with these ripples. Um, so you're going to first of all create this valley here. So where it goes down and then you create the mountains so you've got valleys and mountains up and down it's a very soft ripple as opposed to a sharper chevron and um, which gives it a really lovely and um, subtle soft effect so with your first color like i said i'm going to use aran or worsted weight yarn and a five millimeter hook i'm actually using here sheepies um chunky monkey um anti-pilling yarn with this one absolutely beautiful it's so nice to work with it's really soft like a marshmallow <clears throat> so we're going to start with a chain like i said that's slipped on our hook and then a chain of um, a multiple of 14 plus get that out of the way and um, plus three on the end so for an aran yarn you're going to start with a chain of 45 for a double knit or a, a light number three yarn you're going to start with a chain of 59 so i'm going to start here with my 45 so one
yarn. So a chain of 45 for Aran yarn, 59 for double knit yarn. You're going to start now. This is all using uh, UK treble crochets. Um, it uses that mostly apart from when we do the border around the edge, um, which are US double crochets. I tend to use US terms. So if you hear me say a double crochet, um, I actually do mean a UK treble crochet. So we're going to make, first of all, we're going to make our first uh, double crochet. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit now. There we go. We're going to make our first double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. We've got one two three and there's our fourth so i'm going to put my yarn over hook into the chain yarn over and pull it through to give me three loops one yarn over through two and then again yarn over through two we're going to do that another four times so that you've done it a total of five times before we make our first little valley so that's one two, three, four, and five. Then in the next um, two stitches, we're going to make a decrease. So that's basically double crocheting two stitches together. So we're going to start off with a yarn over our hook, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull it through so that you've got three loops, yarn over and pull through the front two and leave it there. So we're going to not quite finish that stitch, then we're going to work into the next one and then we're going to draw them both together. So yarn over again, then go into the next stitch along, <clears throat> yarn over and pull it through. So you then would have four loops and then yarn over and just pull through the front two. You should now have three loops and this is where you're going to finish off the stitch and um, join the two together. It's like a little mini cluster stitch to do a decrease basically. So you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now to create that soft ripple effect, we're going to do that again in the next chain. Yarn over hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull through, yarn over through the front two loops. Leave that there so you've got two loops still on your hook, yarn over into the next chain, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through the front two loops and you're left with three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So you'll start to see some shape coming here. So those two little decreases start to form that valley. Now we're going to then build up to our mountain. So we're going to now do four regular double crochets, just a reminder that's a UK treble, into the next four chains. So there's one and two, curling up there, keep that out of the way. And three, and then four, sitting in front of the window here, which is why it's suddenly gone very bright because the sun's come out. Apologies for that. Um, and then in the next two chains, we're going to do an increase. So here is two decreases, and then for the mountains, it's two increases. So you're going to work two. Double crochets in the next chain for your first increase. And then you're going to do another one for your second increase. So again, in the next chain, place two double crochet stitches in the next chain. I'm going to pop this down and you can start to see some shape again here. And you see the shape forming now. So we've got, we've started here, we've got our valley with our decreases and then we've got our mountain with our increases. In between, apart from at the beginning and the end of the row, in between each set of decreases and each set of increases, there are four double crochet stitches. So because I've done my two increases there, I'm now going to place my four double crochet stitches before my next decreases for the valley. That's one. And two, 
and three and four. And so now it's time to create my next valley using two decreases. Yarn over into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull just through the front two and leave them there. Yarn over into the next chain along, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the front two and you should now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So that's our first decrease done and we're going to do it again now. Yarn over into the next chain, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through the front two. Yarn over into the next chain, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through the front two. And then once we've got three left, we yarn over and pull through all three. And there we have the beginnings of our next valley. So like I said before, there are four double crochets between each set of shaping. So I'm going to do that now. One. Two. Three. And four. And now it's time for our next increases for our next mountain. So that means we're going to place two double crochets. In the next chain so both in the exact same space you'll see that I've got two stitches coming from the same chain there and then again in the next one so you do it twice where you place two stitches in the same chain and then it's time for the next four again so one in the next four one two three and four now we're up to the final valley before we get to the end if you are using a double knitted yarn and you've got more chains there will be you'll just carry on doing that until you get to the same point here where you're when you're up to the point where you're at your last um set of decreases for the final valley so carry on going until you're at the same point as here so yarn over and we'll do our decrease. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this now. Yarn over through two. Leave them there into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over through the front two and you've got your three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three. And then I'm gonna do that again. And so we've got our two decreases there. And then we're going to finish off with our um, final double crochets. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then in the very last chain, you're going to place two double crochets in the last chain so you will always do a little increase at the end of every row so one and then two now I am going to change colour for my next row so I'm not going to completely finish off this stitch because I want to get my new colour on here if you are also doing the same thing um, then you can change colour at this point. If you're sticking with the same yarn, you would then yarn over and finish off that stitch and join me once I've put my new colour on. So I am going to trim my yarn. I'm going to grab my new colour, which is the pink sheepies. It's magenta, I think, is the, um, is the shade. This one, I think, is the blue is teal and these... Um, grey one I think is called silver and um, it's beautiful yarn if you can get it it's quite pricey but for a little cushion it doesn't use that much so then I'm going to change my colour by then yarning over and the final yarn over and pull through of that double crochet here is then in the new colour and I'm ready to start my second row in that new colour if you prefer you can tie a little knot here so that that doesn't um, loosen too much as you're before you darn them in so chain we're going to start with a chain of three one two three 
two and three. And if you haven't changed colour, you'd still do the same at this point, that change of th ch uh, chain of three. Turn your work. <clears throat> Yarn over. And then we're going to do five double crochets before we start our first set of um, valleys. So one, two, three, four, and five. And we're now at the point where we're going to do our two decreases here again to keep that shape. So hopefully you're getting the hang of these decreases now. So you don't finish off that first stitch, you yarn over and you go into the next one. Pull through and once you've got your three loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So that's one done, then we're going to do it again. second decrease done and you can see that shape again is forming and then we're going to do our four double crochets until we do our next mountain with the increases so that's one and two three and four and now over the next two stitches we're going to do our increases so two double crochets just a reminder that i'm using us terms so this is a uk treble crochet in there and another two in the exact same space for the next stitch so you can see if you look closer you've got two stitches in one there then it's four double crochets once again until our next set of decreases and four oh, I caught my yarn there I'll just correct that oh, I've done it again <laughs> okay <clears throat> so I've done my four now it's time for my next decrease I'm going to do all of this row with you and then um, I'm going to leave you, uh, I'll give you the information of how many rows you need to do to hopefully get it to size, although that is a little bit fluid depending on um, your tension and things like that. But we'll keep an eye on that and I'll explain how to deal with that situation. So I've done my two, do, do, two decreases there, so I'm now going to do my four double crochets. And if you prefer a written pattern, please do have a look in the description below. You will see a link to a free pattern for this on my blog. And if you much prefer a, an ad-free, simple, printable version, you will also see a link to it for Etsy and Ravelry shops. So now I've done my four and I'm now doing my increase. So there's my first increase for my mountain. I'm going to do my second increase here. One two <clears throat> and you can see the shape that's forming i'm now going to come to my final valley almost so just do my four doubles in between it's always four double in between your um increases and your decreases apart from at each end where it's a bit different one two three <clears throat> and four And then you're going to do your next decrease. I've just lost my yarn on the floor. One moment. That's the first part of the first decrease. Second part of the, of the decrease is there with our three loops. And yarn over, pull through all three. And then into the next stitch. Hopefully you've got this uh, off pack now. And there we go, there's our second decrease. And fingers crossed, you should be left with four double crochet stitches there, plus that original chain that you started with. And we have, so something's gone right. One. Two. Three. 
and four so that is still the same where it's four but in this chain three which was the original part of the original um, starting chain but you'll always have a chain three at the end because we start every row with a chain three you need to find the top of that chain three and you're going to place two double crochets in the same space at the top of that chain of three as well one and two so after your last lot of decreases you do four double crochets and then in the very last um, stitch which technically is the chain of three from the previous round you're going to place two double crochets in there so i'm not going I'll zoom out a little bit i'm not going to do the whole of my um panel for you on here because you should get into the rhythm of it so what you'll need to do um, is depending on um, which yarn you're using for Aran worsted weight yarn you want to do about 22 rows um, before you should have it should be about square so if you measure it it should be sort of across here the same as it is that way um, and that's 22 rows for Aran and about 30 rows for um, double knit now there is a little bit of leeway there it can depend on your colorway 22 worked really well for me because it meant that I could start and end my panels with the same color um, if that wasn't the case for whatever color combination I was doing you could always put an extra row on or you can keep a track on its size and just you know make it to your customized size you don't want to say you don't want it too big because it needs to fit really snugly around your cushion so keep an eye on that um but it is there is a little bit of leeway there if you did need to take away or add a row to make your colorway fit so once you've done that we're going to then straighten off the edges at this point here i'm going to give you a nice um sort of stitch pattern to straighten off those edges there and then i'm going to show you how to join it all together around your cushion now i have done quite a basic join but i will give you some suggestions of what you could do to make it even more snazzy around the edge as well so pause things here and then rejoin me once your panel is to size and i will show you how to make your um, edges straight ready for joining so here we are at the end of the row that I finished row 22 on my Aran I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn and we now need to complete a row of stitches that are all of different heights to um, level this off so the smaller stitches like the US single crochets which is a UK double crochet will be at this sort of over the mountains and then over the valleys we want longer stitches which will be the UK treble crochets or the US double crochets there and then we'll do some half stitches in between here so half double stroke treble depending if you're a US or a UK -er. so we're going to start off here once you've done your chain one you're not going to work into that you're going to go to your first stitch and do a I'm going to use just US terms now to save the confusion so we're going to do a single crochet in the first one and then a single crochet in the second one so two single crochets then in the next three stitches so one two and three i'm going to put a half double crochet in each so if you're not sure what a half is so i've yarned over gone in yarned over pull through till i've got my three loops and then i'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops i'll do that again so that's one That's two. And the third one. So it's two singles, three half doubles, and then in the bottom of the valley here, we're going to do four doubles. So two singles, three half doubles, four doubles. So that's one. That's two. That's three and that's four so you should start to see how it's leveling off there then we're going to do what we did here in reverse so going back to three half doubles now 
which is where you yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over through all three, so that's two. And three. Then I'm going to finish with what I started with, which was two singles. One. And two. You can see how it's now squaring off. And this is our pattern repeat for all the way along, all up and down. So we start off with two singles, one, two, three half doubles, one, two, three, four doubles, one, two, three, four, three half doubles, one, two, three, and then two singles, one, two. <clears throat> and then you would do exactly the same again here. I'll do that with you one more time. <clears throat> so we're going to start with two singles. One and two, three half doubles, one and two and three, and then four doubles, one and two, three and four. And then we're going to go back up the other side with three half doubles. One. Two. And three. And then finally two singles for that pattern repeat. So if you've done the same, <clears throat> excuse me, the same amount of stitches as me, you'll just have one more to go. If you did a... Um, use thinner yarn so you've got more stitches you will have a couple more to go um and obviously if you're using this stitch uh, not for a cushion but for anything else you just need to keep going along now so one more repeat for Aaron or keep going using that same pattern repeat until you get to the end and I will meet you here before we go down this edge here so we've come to the end here and we're then going to work along this raw edge to create a border and we're just going to use single crochets um down here on this border which again is the U uk double crochet if you prefer to have the pattern just in us or just in uk please do check out my etsy and ravel free shops um where you can find it written in the stitch term that you prefer so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into that same place where we put the um, last stitch of this row and we're going to put one more single crochet in there just to help us turn the corner okay so each row is made up of um a double sort of the end of a, it's a double crochet or it's a, a chain of three and around each post of the stitch we're going to place two single crochets so for each color change if you've done color changes if not for each row you're going to have two stitches um at the end of each one so i've got one here at the end where i've done it to turn and so i'm then going to move us along slightly and pick up sort of you don't want to go too far into your project but just underneath that post there put your hook in and make a single crochet there so i've now got two at the end of the blue section so i'm going on to my gray now so i can see there's a couple of places I can put a stitch. I can put one there and then I can put one there. And so they're not both in the same place. I do separate them out at the end of the row and you will find you'll get into a rhythm and you'll find a natural space to put your hook to work these single crochets. There isn't a right or a wrong place to put your hook, essentially. Um, I can't tell you exactly where to put it. It, um, it just as long as you are spreading them out evenly and just putting two at the end of each colour. So I'm onto the pink now. So as long as it's around a pink and I've got one there and then I've got two there. And you're going to do that all the way down until you get to the other end where we're going to square off the other end, which is almost the same as what we've just done, but with a very slight difference. So Go along there, putting two at the end of each row, two single crochets, and I will meet you when you get down to here. 
So we've come to the end here, I've done my single crochets all the way down and now we're going to work along here to square this off. Now it's slightly different, the stitch pattern is essentially the same except we have a different starting position because we've, we're starting in the middle of a valley, <clears throat> whereas at the other end we started at the top of a mountain. So we're halfway through a valley which means we need to place two double crochets at the bottom of our valley here before going to our half doubles here. And then our, our singles at the top there. So um, you, in order to map, sort of get the, the hook where you need it to be, we need to actually start with a chain. I'm going to start with a chain of two there. And that is in place of one of those double crochets in the valley. So you're also working here into the other side of the original starting chain that you did, which can also create a few uh, tricky issues. But hopefully... Um, you'll sort of find where your hook goes fairly naturally. So in the next chain along then, you've done your chain uh, of two there to match the height of your stitches that you're doing. And then you're going to place a double crochet next to it. <clears throat> then next to that, again, in now working into these chains, you can see they're rather than stitches, it's the chains, but you should naturally find the places to put your hook. Um, we're now going to do three half double crochets. So that's one. Split my arm there. Two. And three. And now we're going to the um, single crochets. So this time it's one. Two. Three. And four single crochets and you can see here it's squaring off so we've done our singles we're going back to our halves now so we're going to do three half doubles one two and three and then to match how we started we'll place two double crochets in the next two stitches working down that valley Okay, so that for this end is the stitch pattern. So it's it's the same, but in reverse really with those singles and doubles. So from here, we're then going to do two doubles, three half doubles, and then four singles over the top of the peak there, and then repeat it again. So hopefully it'll um, make sense because it's kind of in sort of in reverse of what you did the other side. So just a reminder, you're going to start now with another two doubles, three half doubles, and then four uh, single crochets before starting the half doubles and doing that again. By the time you get to this end, you should have ended on a um, double crochet. Um, so but I'm going to show you instead of that last double crochet that you'll do, stop at just having done one and I'll show you how to uh, make it slightly neater at the end there. So I've got to the end, I've done one double crochet, I should be doing another one here, but instead I'm going to do a chain of two like I did the other end and instead I am going to place, I'm going to start the border on this side and to help me turn that corner I am going to go where I would start the um, single crochets to go up the border and I'm going to place a single crochet there. And what that does is kind of just gives you that nice finish there and then you can start single crocheting up here. So you're going to do exactly the same again where you single crochet two at each end um, of the row. So whether that's in a colour change for you or not making sure that there's two single crochets at the end of each double uh, crochet row um, and then I will see you once you get back here we'll join and then we will um, join them together to make our cushion just to show you how to join here so I've got to the very end I've got to the very last one that I did there and then I am just going to go to that first stitch that I did um, of that first single crochet on the squaring off row and I'm just going to make a slip stitch in there <clears throat> trim yeah, I know that pull through and just fasten off those ends like so 
So we are now ready to begin um, joining our panels together. Um, so you're going to want to put your wrong sides together. So for me, because there isn't really a right and a wrong side when you're doing it, I've decided that the right side is the side that I had facing me when I was doing my single crochets. So that means the stitch kind of leans towards me slightly if you can see that so I've decided that's the right side so I'm going to put the wrong side facing up that with that one <clears throat> and then I am going to put this one over the top so that's the wrong side of that one that's the wrong side of that one so that on the outside I have got the two outside the correct facing um, panels to me so what we're going to do is really really simple now I like to just do a single crochet join, which WS, a UK double crochet. So I just like to go around and do single crochets. However, um, if you would rather do something like a slip stitch or something more fancy, there are other ways to do it. But I would at least start with single crochet join around and then you could always add another sort of border on the top. Something like a scallop stitch looks nice um, or a little pico edge or a bobble. Um, any of those things I'm not going to do that on this tutorial or for this cushion Um, I feel like the ripples are enough I was quite happy with how if you have a look at this one how this one sort of finished off I didn't feel like it needed anything else Um, but I'm not the fanciest of um, people in terms of embellishments so don't let that hold you back just because I haven't done it Um, so I'm also just going to tuck these ends in because uh, I don't need to sew them in really because they're going to be hidden inside the cushion um, also for the purposes of this this is a cushion where we're going to single crochet all the way around including along every side I um, you can do it where there's a flap and buttons or a zip or something like that but this is um, a beginner friendly pattern and I'm just going to take it as red that it's a surface wash only we won't be able to take the cushion cover off to um, wash it or anything like that uh, that suits me I'm happy with that um, for more advanced joins of cushions perhaps um, there are other ways that you can do it where you would potentially put buttons there so that you can or you know you might have one little bit longer so it folds over and you can put some buttons there and then you could open it out um, or if you're handy with a sewing machine you can put it add a zip to it along one edge but we're not going to do that for the purposes of this tutorial we're not going to bring our cushion pad into the equation until we've joined three sides. So we're going to join three sides, one, two and three. I like to think of this as the top and this is the bottom. And I like to do my final join at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. It's just the way I am and the way I do things. So I'm going to join here and I'm going to join and I'm going to do my first around. In each corner, when I get to a corner stitch, there isn't, uh, you don't have to be too accurate with this. It's fairly forgiving with crochet I'm going to place two single crochets in one stitch which is the very very um, corner stitch so when I've gone through both like that I am going to put two stitches in there um, to turn the corner and I'm not going to do any chains or anything I find that st two stitches is absolutely plenty if you want a sharper more right angled really sharp edge you might want to do um, a single crochet and a chain and then a single crochet but for me I'm happy with how that looks okay so let's get going we're going to join I'm just going to turn to that side because I am going to join here I'm going to use um, the same color I think that I did my border on but you can choose any color that you want to do I'm going to make a slip knot first and this is my preferred method of joining your yarn onto a project if you have a different preferred method uh, feel free to do that right let's zoom in slightly okay so we're going to start with a corner stitch now I'm not going to put my two in here I am going to do that when I get round to this one here when I'm coming along the bottom to finish off so I've oh I've only gone through one there, so I'm going to go through one on one panel and then it's equivalent, it's opposite equivalent on the other side. So I'm working through both panels at the same time. 
creating that single crochet so I like to start with a zipper on my hook so that I can just start crocheting without actually physically having to join it and just going to place one single crochet in each stitch along so what can be the trickiest part of this is making sure that you're you don't miss a stitch on the other side so sometimes if you have one that's gone slightly out of place or it's a bit smaller it can get missed and then you're misaligned when it comes to finishing it off so you're going to go all the way up doing that all the way when you get to the corner here you're going to place two single crochets in a corner to turn or, turn the, the corner and come down this way so i'll meet you once you've done three sides and we're ready to put our cushion pad in. So as you can see, I've now joined all the way around and you should have done the same. I love the effect that um, the single crochet gives. I find it, it really frames the cushion panels really well. And if you have any of those little ends that are sneaking out because you were lazy like me and didn't <laughs> sew them in, just I just usually get a pair of scissors and just push them through to the other side. <laughs> If this is something you're making for yourself, it doesn't really matter. If it's something you were making to sell, I'd probably advise sewing the ends in properly but so they don't wiggle for you um, and poke out like that. <clears throat> so we're now going to put the cushion pad into the cushion cover. I've left the bottom bit open to do that. Um, it is a, a, a tight squeeze and it is going to stretch this cushion, but just the, the cover. But just remember that it's... Um, it's going to sort of give it a really nice plump feel. So we want to place it all the way in. Making sure that you get right into those corners. <clears throat> okay and then kind of so it's going to poke out a little bit like that until we have closed it over at the other end but you can see how gorgeous is that I'm so pleased with that beautiful so like i say it's going to poke out so when we're sewing when we're crocheting it together at the bottom edge um you're going to have to sort of be pushing it down like that as you do it so i'm gonna get this going so i have turned my corner here i've done my two to turn the corner because i just thought it'd be a little bit easier so it is a bit trickier doing this bottom edge to the rest of it because obviously you're trying to keep the uh cushion pad in there so i'll just zoom in again there we go so just got to it's literally a case of taking it one stitch at a time along the bottom edge where you're closing it over sorry i'm actually in order to make this work so i can film it i'm standing up and leaning over my desk and it's not the most comfortable of positions <laughs> so do a couple more so you're just going to single crochet along the bottom there but as you can see i'm working quite hard actually to push this down push it against myself i'm I, i'm not in the best position here to be honest it'd be easier if i was sat down and had it on my knee um but you're basically just going to single crochet all the way along until you get to the other end <clears throat> and then you'll fasten off and um, i'll show you the final product in a minute and here you have your final product of your ripple cushion and um, absolutely gorgeous this yarn has made this so squishy and soft this is my aran version uh, so my worsted weight version and this is my double knit version both the same pattern but you can see how different um, yarns can look and how different um, the color schemes can look as well so it's a really versatile thing it looks so good as you can see my back my blanket in the background there is the same yarn as this so this is going to go with that blanket there and you can find 
the pattern for that blanket on my YouTube and also my uh, website. It's a free one. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's, there you have it. There's your ripple stitch cushion. Ideal for beginners. If you enjoyed this make, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me a follow or subscribe. Follow on uh, social media would be great as well. Um, a comment, a like, anything like that to help. I would really appreciate it. I love making these videos. I'm doing as many as I can at the moment with having a little one at home. Um, and um, yeah, I hope to do some more in the future. So please do subscribe and wait for the next one. Take care now.